Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to focus on a Blender workflow study. So I like doing these every so often, I think it's useful to see a workflow, and this is quite an interesting one because it's got some really nice tips and tricks that are going to speed up life a lot. In one of those areas that's always a pain, clean up. No one likes doing it, so any tips and tricks on that are always appreciated, or at least that's how I felt as I found these different things out. So I had someone send me this file and it contains a 3D printable file of a bolt. In fact, it actually contains a lot of other bits. I don't know what this is. I think it's a phone holder, but it looks like it's some sort of medieval torture device. But anyway, we're going to delete these bits out because we don't want them. Because the request was, well, how can I make this bolt longer? Because this is a 3D printable file. The geometry is not great, as it's all been triangulated from wherever this came from, if it was once from Blender. And trying to make this longer and adding more threading in is a bit of a pain. But with a few tips and tricks, it's very doable. It's just the cleanup that's going to become a bit of a mess, I'd argue. Now, to deal with this, we are going to use an add-on. We're using machine tools. It is a $5 add-on. It's not that expensive. It's got loads of different useful features. And we're going to use one of those features as a bit of a trick. Now with that in mind, I'm just going to go to Edit Preferences, and we want Machine Tools. And we need to make sure a couple of things are activated, because you activate these tools as you choose. Now this is my normal setup of the ones that I like to have selected to work. But for this, I will use the Focus at certain points, which is a bit like Forward Slash, but I find it slightly preferable. But most importantly, we're going to use the Cleanup. And we're not actually using this for the cleanup itself, though it will do a bit of cleanup. We're actually using this for a bit of a side trick that you can do with it. The other thing we're going to want is the cursor and origin manipulation. That's not actually needed for this, but it's part of the setup and something I'll do as I go along. Just because it's useful to have something usable at the end for different purposes. So make sure you've got those on. And we'll start with dealing with this issue of having multiples of this thread. So what we're going to want to do is essentially take a section out and then duplicate this along using an array. Now what we're going to need to do with that is match up a point, let's say, perfectly here to a point that's perfectly here. Or alternatively, we could do a point that is here that matches up perfectly here. Either way, it should be one section of the whole. Now, if we come in to look in vertex mode, what I'm doing is looking for some matching bits. So for example, that could potentially work. So I'll have a look at this. That's the first one into this corner, and it is very close to this outer edge. So I'm trying to make things recognizable, and I'm looking to see, well, there's one, two, three verts here, and then one there. So let's come up here, and we've got a similar thing. But the alignment of these vertices isn't exactly the same, and it's quite close together, so that might cause issues. This might work a little bit better because it's right towards the outer edge and there's this recognizable one, two verts on the outer edge. So in theory, we could have that one there and let's look for the same thing here. Yep, we have got that. That is working out. So we'll go with that vert and that vert. And to make this easier, because there's a lot of verts close to each other, I'm going to shift and D, hit X and bring this out to the side. And we're just going to use these as reference points and we know they're perfectly in line with those original verts because we just move them on the x-axis. Now there is one annoyance with this, which is when we go into object mode, we're not going to be able to see them, but we do know that they're there. So I can just sort of remember that they're on not this thick line, but four across from that. Now what we are going to do is need a cube. So let's shift and D, mesh and bring in a cube. And we're going to start dividing up this shape. So let's make that bigger. G and bring that over to somewhere there. So we've scaled it up. Let's double check where those verts are again. Let's bring this down somewhere there. Yeah, that should work. Now what we're going to want to do is snap this somewhere to this vert. And to do that, we're going to use snap base. And you'll notice up here, I've got this set as mixed. I've got it looking at vertices, edges, and faces. And some people don't know that you can do this. They have it set on one and then click on the other. You can have multiples set up. So we're going to move this edge to the vert that's somewhere there. So we need to have vertices and edges. You can have faces still selected, but you don't need it for here. And then that will show up as a mix. So let's just quickly look at where that vert is again. Oh, no, this object. There we go. So somewhere about there. So in object mode, click here, G, B, select this edge, Y to make sure it's going along. And then we're going to snap it to that vert. Even though we can't see it, it will work. So we know that's exactly on that line. Shift and D, bring another one down here. 
and let's zoom in slightly and we want to do exactly the same thing for this vert so g b there y and then snap to that vert and we know that this is going to work out as a perfect section because the point here matches up to the point there we could go back and delete those vertices but a step later is going to do that anyway so it's kind of irrelevant now we've got our bolt up here so let's just g and then z that up so we're covering that and we want to select this object so our cube and this one Control and j to join them together to one object and we're going to take our bolt and we're going to shift and d to duplicate it escape and then hide it so we'll start with this cube shift select the bolt Control and minus and that's going to do a difference boolean and then we're going to select this come to our modifiers and we'll just apply that so now we've got our middle section that's f2 and call that middle we'll hide that bring back our whole bolt and we want the opposite so we'll select our cubes that's got the two bits that we used to cut the other section out shift select our one in the middle and this time control and asterisk and that's going to do an intersection boolean so we're getting let's h that the top and bottom bit here and we've got the middle bit there now for using those shortcuts i was using ball tools that does speed everything up a bit let's apply this and then we're going to go to any edit mode a and then p and then separate by loose parts so now we've got this bit that's f2 and we'll call that top and this bit and we'll f2 and call that bottom i'm sure the pointy bit of a bolt has a proper name but i have no idea what it is if anyone knows feel free to say in the comment section that'd be useful to know and let's just g and y that down a little bit now when we bring this all together we don't want these faces this one here and then that face there and same on our middle section as well so we're going to get rid of those and this is where we're going to use that origin manipulation option so shift and s and we're going to move our object origin to that face now let me just delete out that face and this isn't perfectly needed for this we're not really going to use this but at some point you might need to snap to that now empty hole and this is useful to set up in advance just in case that's going to come up and it does take seconds whereas doing it later where you don't have that face to select on and you start having to select all of these edges around the outside is going to be much more tedious so it pays to do it now we'll come to this one and do the same shift and this object origin to that face and then we'll X and delete out that face. Make sure the middle one's visible. Let's click F. So that is the focus on machine tools. You can do that with forward slash if you prefer it. We'll go into face mode, select this face, shift and S, object origin to face, and then delete out that face, and then delete out that face. So we've now got everything hollowed out so that when we join it together, there's going to be no internal faces that we don't want. It's going to cause problems. So at this point, this gets fairly easy. All we need to do here is add in an array. We don't want this on the X axis. So let's put that to zero. We want this on the Y axis. Let's set that to one and that hasn't worked. So let's just select all of these N and we can see that actually this seemed to have some rotation on it when we brought it in. So let's control and A, apply the rotation. We don't need to apply the scale as well. So just the rotation. And that's going to make this easier to work out. We want this as 1 on the Y. No, minus 1 on the Y. So we're down here. And then we can up this to have, let's say, a few more sections. Let's G and Y that up. And we'll make sure we use our snap base again. G and B right on that corner. And then to the same point there. That looks like it lines up perfectly. There we go. So we've got this lining up with this, and I think here, let's have a look, yeah, that lines up pretty well as well. So we've got no problem there, but I'm not sure that this matches perfectly what's there. In fact, it very much looks like it doesn't. So let's apply this array, and then we'll have a look. And yes, these don't line up very nicely. We can see we've got a vertex here without a vertex and edge on the other side. So these are not connected. We've got a problem and we've got a little bit of a gap between them as well. Mm, so how are we going to deal with this? Now, the fact that this is going to leave a lot of engons is not going to be a problem because we're using this for 3D printing. And these slight differences in level aren't going to be a huge issue. 
other than the fact that there are these gaps, which means it's not a manifold mesh. And this is where our trick's going to come in. So let's select that, shift select that, shift select that, and control and J to join them together. We're going to go into vertex mode A, and then I'm going to M and merge by distance. And that's going to remove a load of overlapping vertices, in this instance 1500. But that's not going to have solved this problem entirely. We're still going to have, no, not the top where we've got these joins, so somewhere here, all of these points that don't quite line up. Now, how are we going to solve this? Well, we could go there, and then we could M, and then merge at last, and we could do that for all of these, and it's going to take absolutely forever. We don't want to do this. This is going to be a nightmare. So we want a faster way of doing this. The first thing we could do is arguably a m and then merge by distance and then start upping that distance until they start joining together but you'll notice we only want to do this along this line that's the place we want to do this where it's joining together we don't want let's just go back a m and then merge by distance we don't want to start affecting all of the other vertices down here that is going to make this less of a smooth mesh it's not going to work so we don't want to do that so what we want is a way of just selecting these edges and starting working on them. And even then we want to work on just the bits that are messed up. Now we could go into edge mode and start trying to alt select there and then shift and alt select the other one. And then we're gonna have to do that for all of those lines. That is a really horrible way to do this. So what instead we're gonna do is use the cleanup function in machine tools. To use that, once it's activated, you just press three. And that is going to do a range of functions. It is going to do all of the stuff here. And one of the things that we can do is merge by distance. Now, what we're not going to do, this is slightly counterintuitive, is start using the merge by distance. Because while this will work, it starts, we start dragging it along, degenerating all of the mesh everywhere. And we don't want that. We only want to, let's just put that back to zero, to deal with the mesh that's not connected. So I'm gonna click off, I'm gonna do that one more time, hit three, make sure that's on zero. But you'll notice, as part of that function, it's selected the areas where there's issues. So with those selected, now what I can do is press M and start a new merge by distance. And let's just increase this. You'll notice this is only affecting those selected vertices or those selected edges because that's the way the merge by distance works it doesn't work on everything so now we're just fixing these problem areas as best we can now once we've got a bit of a way what i'm going to do is click off and hit three again and it will now only select the areas where there's still problems because there's no point doing a merge by distance still on each of these edges it's just going to mess up the geometry even more so now we've only got fewer areas being selected. So once again, M, merge by distance. Let's increase this a bit, which is only fixing those areas now. We'll hit three again, and you'll notice now we've got everything fixed. It has slowly gone through. I'm not saying it's created amazing geometry, but you'll notice once we come out of edit mode, this really isn't noticeable. This is on a tiny scale. It's not going to cause a problem with printing. We don't care about engons. And it has solved our issues of this not being a manifold mesh. So this combination of using the machine tools cleanup to not only do some of the cleanup, but also identify the issue areas and then using merge by distance separately is a really nice little trick. So what we'll do is go now to 3D print. This is another add-on, but it comes with Blender. So just make sure you go to get extensions and 3D print, which is there. Oh, I've just noticed there's some to update. That's useful because I wanted to do a Blender Basics video on add-ons and extensions. So that's really helpful. So I can start making that now. But with that activated, all I can do is come to 3D Print, check all and see if there's any issues now. And oh, we do still have a few non-manifold edges. So let's go into vertex mode, click that, and we'll see where those non-manifold edges are. And they'll be highlighted in the same way. Let's go and have a look at these, and we've got one or two that didn't get caught. So let's just fix those manually. Got that one there, let's bring it to there. I can either M and merge by last, or to last, 
or we could do there, there, and then we're going to use one, and there, there, and I'm going to hit one as well. One is using the smart vert function, which is one of those ones that I had listed earlier to activate. Let's check all again, and we should now have less. I've got a problem here. So you'll notice I'm not trying to use the same trick now at this point, because there's so much less to fix. I can just do this manually at this point. And that's less likely to cause problems than doing this general merge by distance. Where are you? There we go. So vertex mode there, one. Let's check all again. And you'll see using this one, it just is a little bit quicker than having to go to M and then find the at last and then click at last. It just speeds things up. Right, there we go. And there, 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 and one. And oh, there's another one there. Let's try that again. And then, nope, we're all fixed. We don't generally have to care about intersecting faces. Only the top two are a real problem. Non-fat faces will get sorted out as we bring it into our slicing program, or we could bring it into 3D Builder. So at this point, we've got our elongated thread on our now longer bolt, which is what was requested, and it's all nicely cleaned up, ready to go, and we can now export this. So hopefully that trick was useful, a little bit of an unusual way to do cleanup. So using an add-on in a slightly unorthodox way, I'm not sure if it was really intended when it was designed to be used that way, but it turns a problem that could take absolutely hours into one that takes a matter of minutes. I will put the base object up on Patreon so you can have a go at doing this yourself if you're interested. The Patreon is also the best way to support the channel if you're willing to do that in a monetary way. But just the simple things of hitting that like button if you found this useful is also really appreciated, as is leaving a comment as that engages all of YouTube's funky algorithms that mean they start showing the videos to more people. If you have another way that you'd have gone about cleaning this up, please feel free to say in the comment section as well. I always love to hear new strategies and tricks for cleanup, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.